or today we want to talk about uh, broadhead design and friction features. So um, it's a lot of rabbit holes you can go down when you're talking about this stuff, but I'll start to try to stay on track. Uh, basically, under what I call friction features, there's two different categories, broad categories, that you can uh, consider when you're selecting a broadhead. So um, you have pre-impact, and that has a whole list of things that come under it regarding broadheads, and then you have impact, and that's a separate subject I'll try to go into as well. But uh, anyway, to try to keep this streamlined, I'll try to move on, so not to get sidetracked too bad. So anyway, basically, got single bevel, double bevel, three blade head, uh, got probably some four blade heads laying around, but you basically got two, three, and four blade designs. And uh, so we'll talk about uh, pre-impact first, the design. Uh, there's different categories that you can put under design, but if a broadhead won't fly well, I don't care how strong it is, I don't care how sharp it is, you've got to have the flight part of it down. Now you can overcome that by tuning your bow, you know, matching your arrows to your bow, uh, as long as your broadhead's not warped, bent, uh, or put together wrong. You've got the, it's the uh, insert is not straight, uh, or you have a bend. Sometimes uh, broadheads will get damaged, and they have a bend, and they will fly well. So flight. So that's the first thing. Get them flying right. Tune your bow. Tune your arrow. Uh, the next thing is sharpness. Uh, are they sharp at the factory? Most of them uh, are pretty sharp. Some of them are not sharp at all, but it's up to you to test them, make sure they're sharp, and if they're not, sharpen them. And that's a whole other thing. You can talk about how to sharpen them. That's be a different video. I've got some videos on sharpening. But um, So the next thing is... Um, after the sharpness is strength, uh, how strong is your broadhead? Uh, what materials are, is it made of? How thick are the materials? Uh, and that type of thing, the strength. And then the size of your broadhead. Uh, we're talking about friction features here. So the smaller the broadhead is, the less friction it has when it's passing through the animal, the less friction it actually has in the air, and uh, you might get better flight out of it. So uh, the size of your broadhead. Uh, the blade angle. Uh, here's a three blade. One of these is probably gonna fly better than the other one, but if you FOC, you're still gonna get good flight out of the larger head. But a smaller broadhead, will penetrate better than a larger broadhead. Same speed, same weight of arrow, and that type of thing. That's just the physics of it. They will both penetrate well, but one that's a smaller broadhead is going to penetrate better. It just will. <clears throat> so, and then that blade angle, not, not only size of the broadhead, but the blade angle. Kind of wanted to touch on that. You can see this is a steeper angle than this. So, those is smaller, and more likely because it's smaller, it will penetrate better. But if they were the same size broadhead, the angle of the blades really makes a big difference. In other words, if you have a really wide big broadhead or a really skinny big broadhead, the skinnier broadhead with the uh, more gentle slope uh, on the blades is going to penetrate better. Let's see. Um, blade angle. So blade angle and size kind of stick together. So blade number. The more blades you have, three blade, two blade, the more cutting friction is involved. Now it can be offset by what people call shaft pinch, or even the broadhead pinch, the bigger hole you cut, the less pinch there is on the shaft. But just, it's something to mention that the more blades you have, the more cutting friction you have uh, going through the animal. Uh, the ferrule design, here I've actually ground this one off. But you can see, I haven't ground that one off. And it's got, if you just rub your finger down the side, this is actually designed to put a, a bleeder blade through. But if you want to shoot it uh, just with two blades, it's a, uh, it's imperative that you grind off the front of this ferrule so that it, it slopes and it doesn't have this friction feature, the front of the ferrule sticking out like that. Uh, vented versus unvented. The vent itself supposedly can make noise. I don't know if you're shooting fast enough, maybe that doesn't matter, but uh, there is, uh, you got bow noise and then you got arrow noise and vents supposedly will make more noise than an unvented broadhead. I've never really tested that out, but uh, I suppose that works that way. But uh, the vent itself is a friction feature. I mean, if you take your finger, rub it down the side of the broadhead and there's no vent there, you pick up the other broadhead, the identical broadhead, and it's got a vent, you know that that's going to be some, there's going to be some friction because there's going to be tissue dragging into those vents. Significant or insignificant, I don't know, but it's just worth mentioning that vents do offer uh, some friction. Okay. So, uh, shaft diameter, that goes along with the ferrule. Uh, so, another friction feature is your, the base of your ferrule, the width. On this one, the ferrule is not as wide as the arrow. So the arrow, the tip uh, of the insert becomes a friction feature because the ferrule is not as wide as the arrow. In this one, the ferrule is, is at least as wide, if not wider, than the, uh, the shaft itself. <clears throat> so there is a way to overcome this. On this, if you've got one that's slightly wider, the shaft is slightly wider than the ferrule, you can actually take a sharpening stone and just simply spin it, and you can take the shoulders, the sharp shoulders off of your insert, and it rounds it off, and then it will reduce uh, that friction feature. Okay, uh, maintenance. So we've gone from broadhead, pre-impact, design, and now a separate category is maintenance. Design is basically how the broadhead itself is made. The maintenance is how you treat it once you get it. The first thing I'll start with is flight. That goes back to bow tuning and making sure your arrow flies perfectly straight. Um, 
if you don't get that right, there's an energy dump because you're, when your arrow is turned sideways going in an animal, uh, I've heard of cases where it was so poorly matched to the bow where the arrow actually slapped the animal <laughs> instead of penetrating it, uh, either from poor release or uh, not matching, you know, not having your spine and your bow matched. But the straighter that goes in, uh, the more energy that you have to penetrate, uh, so you don't, in other words, the whole arrow itself becomes a friction feature if it goes into the animal at an angle. The side of the broad head, the side of the arrow, is the whole thing it has a massive energy dump because the whole the whole arrow setup is a friction feature. Sharpening. Um, so the maintenance part is you uh, sharpening. Do they come from the factory sharp? Some blades, I know the muzzies when you take them out of the box, they're scary sharp. But some blades are not. So uh, you can use a stone to sharpen them. You can use a file. You can use uh, one of these little manual sharpeners. There's whole entire sharpening systems that you can use to put that together. But for most people, they know a sharp red broadhead goes without saying. The sharpness itself uh, becomes a friction feature and is much less lethal. It'll just it'll go by a blood vessel and push it aside. <clears throat> uh, cleaning. Let's see here. How vile is this? Some broadheads, uh, especially the carbons, here this one's got dirt on it. It's been shot in the dirt. Uh, but you can just take a toothbrush, water, clean them off like that. But this one's got quite a bit of rust on it too. So uh, you know once it's rusted, it's not going to be sharp. And the rust itself creates a friction surface and the dirt creates a friction surface. So uh, clean your broadhead. Uh, another thing is, is when you put things together, <clears throat> So you glue an insert in, or you glue your threaded insert into the, the rod head, and there's glue sticking out. Now, when you, if you use hot glue, the first thing you want to try to think about doing is wiping the glue off. What I do is, is I glue it on there, and I wait for the glue to dry, and then I break the glue off. Because if you, off, if you try to wipe the hot glue off while it's hot, it can burn you, and it just smears it on everything. So the best way to reduce or eliminate that friction feature is glue them on. If you hot glue them, let your glue dry and cool, and then just break the glue off. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention that I didn't really have on my list, one of these broadheads, I know when I was checking for friction features, one of the ways you check is you simply carefully take your hand and run it down the center of the broadhead to feel if there's any burrs or things like that. Well, I was actually looking for glue that I was going to break off, thinking there was glue down around the bottom that was real small, maybe I couldn't see it. And in the manufacturing process, there was actually a burr standing up on the bottom of the ferrule. So I just took a, you can take a stone or a file, and I just basically took the burr off the base of the ferrule. So I eliminated that friction feature just by grinding it off. Okay, so let's just start with friction features by looking at a broadhead, maybe even several different kinds. Now, uh, start with a tip. A needle tip, like this broadhead, is the best penetrating broadhead regarding nothing else. Just the design of that needle tip. If you take a piece of paper and you take a wide fat tip and a needle tip, you as soon as you start pushing through that paper, the needle will just almost start without you even pushing it. But the return is, and this is where post-impact or impact uh, consideration comes in, that you don't want that tip to curl. So you need to sharpen the tip, and then we'll go into tip design maybe a little bit later. But make sure your tip is, is sharp. Um, so the blades. Obviously, the blades need to be sharp. And uh, everybody has their level of sharp. Uh, my, I don't even know if this is, I think this is a, yeah, this is a one that hasn't been sharpened. But uh, my test is if I take a, I don't think any of these have been sharpened, but if I take a broadhead, put it on a piece of paper, and it not only slices the paper, but it nose dives into the paper. In other words, it'll cut an inch, inch and a half cut without hardly any pressure on the paper at all. That is my test to say sharp enough, because that is sharp. If it just cuts quarter inch or half inch, not sharp enough. But when you push it across there, and it actually, this right here is a big slit. He goes there, and, it, and it, the broadhead nose dives into the paper. That's crazy sharp. And that's my level of sharp. <clears throat> okay, uh, the tips, the blades, the surface. Make sure you clean them, get the rust off, get the dirt off. Uh, the ferrule itself, I think I talked about that. Here is a, the one on this side is ground off. And the, at the edge of the ferrule, the top part of the ferrule here is uh, squared. So... If you want to shoot this with two, with four blades, with the insert, then you'll need that to square it off and make it straight. But if you're going to shoot them two blade, or you have any, uh, even this one, it's not designed to shoot two blade, you can see the bubble. In fact, there were some heads years ago, they call them bubble heads, because they had a big bubble in the front of the, uh, the ferrule. You'll need to grind that down. And this one has been ground down to uh, eliminate that friction feature. Okay, I may have missed some stuff, but I'm going to go on to the next thing. So friction features, broadheads, this is friction features. Uh, what I've already talked about is pre-impact. All the things that you can do before the arrow strikes the animal. Okay, the next one is impact. So your arrow has to fly perfectly. So flight is the first thing. Make sure you're tuned, uh, regardless of what weight you choose. And there's all kinds that you can debate to the end of the earth on how heavy of an arrow people want to shoot, high FOC and that type of thing. But whatever you shoot, make sure it shoots straight and it's tuned to your bow because that's maximum efficiency for penetration so your entire arrow doesn't become a friction feature going sideways or angled into the animal. Uh, the, weight of the, uh, the weight of your setup, uh, if, like I said, you can choose this, the uh, high FOC to make things fly well and makes uh, things fly more efficiently. Uh, that's something that you know, is debatable as well on how high, heavy, how heavy is heavy enough. Um, 
too heavy, won't fly fast enough. Animal moves because the arrow is going so slow. Um, you know, but the animal doesn't move, but the arrow's still alive. You don't get the penetration, and there's no lethality involved. And you get to watch your arrow, $30 for the arrow, run off in the woods, and you don't collect your animal, and you lose your arrow, and all that's gone into setting it up. So, anyway, uh, the weight is debatable, but it is a, a penetration uh, factor, and uh, affects penetration. Uh, broadhead integrity. So, we call for pre-impact. Now, this is impact. Uh, if you have this, uh, or any kind of broadhead that just, I mean, it's got a massive cutting diameter, and uh, if you hit the soft parts and you don't encounter bone and you're, you know, shooting reasonably fast and everything else is correct, uh, these things work magnificently. But if you encounter bone uh, and you've got this steep angle, uh, if you encounter bone, you're probably going to have this thing shear blades off and just come apart. And it's got an aluminum furl. So you want solid steel all the way back and thick steel blades. Uh, these are probably like 0.027 or something like that. Um, probably a minimum on blade thickness as far as traditional heads to be about 0.04 or higher. Um, so flight weight, broadhead integrity. Uh, both of these broadheads penetrate awesome, but this long, more narrow broadhead will penetrate better, but there's a trade-off. Anytime you lengthen the broadhead, if you don't thicken, thicken the steel, uh, there's more chance of a tip curl. And this thing can strike bone in the whole broadhead. Now these are tough. These are tough. There's a video of somewhere a guy shooting these uh, sharks into a steel drum, and he shot, I think, one of these. I can't remember what this shark. Uh, this is 190 grain. He shot it into a steel drum like 20 times before it finally, I think it broke the tip off after he shot it into a steel drum 20 times. So pretty tough. Now steel drum compared to a shoulder bone, I don't know. But uh, just to show you, you need some tough thickness in your blades um, because we're talking about impact and a broadhead that flies wonderful. Uh, you've got your FOC and everything else is good, but you don't have a strong broadhead. If you get a bone impact, it could just uh, stop the show right then. Any broadhead that's sharp and flies well, if you hit soft parts, just they probably all work. But uh, we're just talking about friction features, how to increase penetration and um, in bone strikes. So in order to get into animal, regardless of your broadhead, you know, you're hitting fur. Uh, one of my friends had a, I think he'd shot an elk out in Colorado, I think. And he had the the hide tanned with the fur on and he used it for a blanket. And because uh, some of the, I think he even uh, guided some up in, uh, I think that was Wyoming. And uh, he used it for a blanket because they didn't have any heat in their cabins. He said that that elk had six inches of fur on it. So you're cutting through fur, you're cutting through hide, you're cutting through muscle, you're cutting through ribs. You may even center a rib, a big rib on a big animal can have its own resistance, even though they're not as rigid as like a scapula or something. Um, so you're going through fur, hide, muscle, bone. Does your broadhead have the ability to stay sharp? As soon as it impacts, your sharpness is going down. No matter how much integrity your broadhead has, it will not get any sharper the moment it starts entering that animal. So you want maximum sharpness to, uh, to reduce that friction feature and the sharpness, the type of steel that will hold an edge, not just be sharp when it first enters and it just gets dull really quickly as it's passing through the animal, but has the integrity to keep that blade sharp as it passes all the way through the animal. Uh, does the broadhead have the potential to stay together? Uh, some broadheads, I think I've got one. Uh, I don't see it. I'll just use this as an example. So this is an Oscut broadhead, and uh, I think it's a .06 maybe, .05, .06. It's a monolithic broadhead. It doesn't involve any kind of a insert, aluminum insert. It's solid steel. Just to touch on that, talking about keeping the broadhead together. This um, broadhead's laminated steel, and it's got a steel insert in it. So you want to do away with your aluminum stuff, because now we're at the point of, does your broadhead stay together? Not only sharp, but does it deteriorate and fall apart as it's going through the animal? Reduces penetration and lethality. But this is an example of a monolithic broadhead. Steel all the way through, one piece, super thick, super tough. This is kind of both ends of the spectrum, monolithic. This is, and look, check the slope out on the, the slope difference. I think this is maybe a one and a quarter inch, or maybe even one inch by, by an inch and an eighth cut. And this is a three to one. This is probably tougher because it's, it's a short. The physics won't allow it to bend because it's got a thicker blade and it's shorter. But this has more potential to penetrate. Both of them have the uh, tanto tip or whatever that's called to keep the tip itself from curling. Uh, but, you know, just whatever your choice is. But this one has the more potential to penetrate. This one has more potential to uh, not uh, be affected by impact and come apart or degrade. Now, on this, these lines, this is carbon steel, this is stainless steel. I really don't like stainless steel. Um, I guess it has its place, but I don't like sharpening it. It's a disaster for me. I just, it just takes forever, it seems like, to get a blade. And I never, even though I get them sharp, I don't get them near uh, as sharp as what a carbon blade is. And maybe I just don't have the skills to do that. But uh, steel versus carbon, thickness, blade angle, monolithic versus a, but this is still a steel insert. Uh, design. So, so anyway, I think that's about covered what I was going to say about this. Um, just to reiterate on this, you don't, you want to do away with all the aluminum that you can up front. Uh, 
this is aluminum threaded insert, and this is solid steel. Not only have you got the weight, but you have the strength where your ferrule, uh, inside your ferrule, or that won't bend on impact. So. I just want to show the different designs. And uh, I'll post these up, and uh, that way, if you want to take a picture of them, just things to consider when you're selecting broadheads. There's things I probably haven't covered. But, uh, there's my notes. Take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then go look at your broadheads and go down the list. There you go.